mass. This is a patient whom I did a procedure day before yesterday as the first patient of this ACT. He's a 12-year-old boy. There may be a small number of people who may not know, so I will just make it very briefly. There also may be a few persons with, to whom I, dis I disclosed what is the nightmare. So I request them not to tell anything right now. Uh, so it, let, let, let me present to you. This is a patient with bilateral pulmonary, pulmonary artery post-surgical severe stenosis, which was resulting in a right ventricular systolic pressure of 110, equal to systemic pressures. And also he had a severe superior vena cable narrowing because in the last surgery, his glenshunt was undone and he was, the superior vena cava was again connected back to the right atrium. He had a pressure gradient of 14 millimeters of mercury across the superior vena cava with huge dilated chest wall veins, facial puffiness every day in the morning. So we took him up for an angiography. The right pulmonary artery angiography shows severe narrowing. It's actually partly a Gore-Tex patch. Left pulmonary artery shows again severe osteal and the hilar narrowing. Then we put in a balloon into the right pulmonary artery and we dilated. This is to check the compliance as well as create a pathway for our stents. This is the right pulmonary artery dilatation with a Mustang 10 millimeter balloon. Then we did the same thing on the left pulmonary artery. This is the right balloon. Then the sheath was advanced into the right. Then the, the Mustang balloon was used to pre-dilate the left. So this is the pre-dilatation of the left. So after this, this uh, sheath was also pushed in deeper. So we had two sheaths. We decided to put in a 12 millimeter uh, uh, stent, the Zephyr stent, which was presented by Dr. Avinash today, an Indian made stent in the right pulmonary artery. We checked the positions, we inflated, we got the gradients in the right pulmonary artery down to 10. Then we positioned for the left pulmonary artery. We thought that in this particular position, we are covering the ostium of the left pulmonary artery. This is a non-foreshortening stent. So then we deployed. As we are deploying, we can see that we are actually catching the waist. Now you see that is the waist. That is a tight waist. So in fact, we were catching correctly the left pulmonary artery waist. However, after that, we found that the left pulmonary artery was looking a little small at that osteal area. So we decided to post dilate it. So this is the right. This was the left. And we post dilated that with a 14 atlas balloon. And at the end of it, we had a reasonable opening of the right and left pulmonary artery with 10, 10 gradient across. The right ventricular systolic pressure was around 60. The, the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery pressures uh, were in and around 40. Now, now the, at this part, I uh, stopped the transmission because the time was running off. The intention was to pull out both the wires and have one of my sheath going through the superior vena cava and to prepare for a superior vena cava stent. We had already done an angiogram and it was a short segment about 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter stenosis at the SVC RA junction where the SVC was reconnected to the right atrium. So what we did was, by this time, the, the, four, uh, the two pulmonary arteries have been dilated. I had exhausted about 4 ml per kilogram of contrast, and I wanted to save the contrast. So the, what I did was, I pulled the sheath up to the right atrium, advanced my guide wire superiorly towards the direction of superior vena cava, and then I got the, the catheter, the catheter was showing a pressure of 20 to 22 millimeters of mercury, which was something similar to my previous recorded superior vena cava pressures. The RA pressure was around 10. So this gave a gradient of around 10 to 11. I did uh, just a flush injection. I, 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 I advanced the sheath over the guide wire into the superior part on the anteroposterior projection and then turned around in the lateral projection and now I am injecting. 
I'm able to see the azygos filling down. Previously, the superior vena cava was, was uh, filling the azygos nicely, but that azygos was not good enough to decompress the superior vena cava entirely. So what is the comment of the, the panel? I think you can see air in the anterior part. There are quite a few bubbles. Yes, there is air that is floating in the air that is floating in the ascending iota, going up and down with each pulsations of the iota. And uh, in fact, one of my colleagues noticed this transient ST elevation during this time, ST I and mean, some ST change during this time. However, the hemodynamics were remaining reasonably stable. Yeah, that is one one blunder. Second, yeah, but there are some more bubbles in the area of stent as well. In the background, if you see, there are some more bubbles. Uh, so uh, one is uh, about. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so, so some some air, some air is going up. Yeah, and uh, there is some flow uh, from that injection, which is not looking normal. Uh, I don't know why that flow. Okay, should be I'll there. tell you one more story. This patient had a superior vena cava obstruction for about one and a half years, and his whole of the chest is full of lot of veins. And when we made, unfortunately, I'm not able to show now the previous angiogram. When we injected into the superior vena cava, the superior vena cava was mainly collateralized by the azygos, but there were quite a lot of veins that just filled everywhere and came. Unfortunately, I cannot show that. Okay, now I do understand. I will I'll again run this picture. I do understand that there is some sort of flush here and there, like, you know, contrast is going into some areas which we don't like. Okay. No, is it something going into the pulmonary artery in that uh, SVC injection? Okay, so the, so the I have a stent in the right pulmonary artery and I have a stent in the right left pulmonary artery. Shiva, you said that there was no flow in the azygos beforehand and now you're seeing flow in the azygos. No, 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 there was, there was, the, no, there was lot of flows. Lot of flows. Actually, the superior vena cava was decompressing into the azygos before, uh, but it was not good enough to decompress the pressure in the superior vena cava. There was a very prominent azygos noted during the previous diagnostic angiogram. I think we can see the filling of pulmonary So can artery. I go to the next? Yeah. Okay. So, so now I'm going to the next picture. So what I did was, at this particular position, I take my stent inside because I have already, you see that towards the, towards the place just behind the one major coil, which is overlapping the, uh, the sheath, there is some amount of waste. Can you see that? Do you have an AP projection So that of waste this? I targeted. Do you have an AP projection of this? Okay. So, so the, okay, second blunder. Okay, that, it was, it was, it was, at this moment, I have not done an AP projection. Now I will show you the next. So this is the stent. Can you see the stent? Yeah. So can I inflate? Can you see the narrowing and the stent correct in position? I think we are seeing some... Okay, I am deploying the stent. Can I inject now? So I have deployed the stent. There's no flow. Yeah. Now there is, azygos is still filling. Uh, what shall I do? Hemodynamics is stable. The air in the ascending iota has disappeared. The patient looks stable. She wants, it looks like some kind of dissection into the SVC, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is the AP. Yeah. So there's a okay, now and where the next step that I did, I took a neck puncture. Mm. I go in with a sheath, I inject. There is a retro aortic innominate vein in this patient. Mm -hmm. the, this is, there is a right aortic arch, and what you are seeing is a retro aortic 
denominate vein below the right aortic arch. Okay. So the next step that I'm doing. So now tell me what is wrong. Your stent is not in the. Now I'll go back. I'll tell you the basic principles have not been followed at all by me in this particular step. I pushed my catheter up inside in this location. I saw a pressure of 20 to 25. I thought that it is superior vena cava. I pushed the sheath inside. I did not recognize that I am posterior pulmonary. to the right pulmonary artery. Superior vena cava is anterior to the right pulmonary artery. The reason why I got missed out was, number one, pressure was high. Number two, this azygos confounded me. In fact, the patient is getting, I am crossing the PFO. I'm entering into the pulmonary vein. I'm injecting in the pulmonary vein and the left atrium is filling, not the right atrium, mm -hmm. and the left ventricle is filling, I am completely overlooking that because I have a superior azygos vein that is filling. The reason why azygos started to fill in a pulmonary vein injection was, whenever there is a chronic superior vena cable obstruction, this sup the bronchial veins all tend to like drain towards the azygos, and when superior vena cava is in, like uh, 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 occluded, there is a lot of venous collaterals that happen between the pulmonary veins and the, uh, the, the azygos system. And so the pulmonary venous injection is generously filling the azygos. So now I am stenting the pulmonary vein. I am stenting the right upper pulmonary vein. This is a clear pulmonary vein wedge injection. I am filling the entire pulmonary veins, but my, my, my eyes are not recognizing it. And I am def inflating it. I am pushing the sheath deep into the pulmonary vein and making a harsh wedge injection because this is not the catheter through which we make a vein wedge injection. This is the sheath. The, the full sheath is now entering, wedging against and making a, making a big injection. So I am dissecting into the lungs. So this is a complete dissection into the lungs in the vicinity of right pulmonary vein. And then the next step is we get it, we get the... The, now the superior vena cava is completely anterior to the right pulmonary artery. So what we did was, I recognized that my pulmonary veins are still intact and patent. So I pull back from the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, into the right atrium. And so this is the, this is the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein had an unobstructed pulmonary blood flow through my stent. The right pulmonary vein was flowing very easily even though I had created a lung, some sort of hematoma. And then I slowly withdrew my sheath. I recorded the pressure, the pulmonary venous pressure, the left atrial pressure, the right atrial pressure. The, the, the left atrial pressures were around 10 to 11. And we continued to have more or less the same pressure down. So now what we did was we wired from the top. We got the catheter down. We snared it, we position the cook formula, and we are trying to inflate. Now see the relationship between the right pulmonary artery stent, which is circular, mm -hmm. and the superior vena cava stent, which is parallel to it. So as I am inflating the superior vena cava stent, the superior vena cava crushes the right pulmonary artery and makes the stent become sort of oval, supra-inferiorly longer, antero-posteriorly shorter. So since there was a compression, we took up a catheter, we crossed the stent, we put a stiff wire, we put a mustang balloon of 12 millimeter again, and when I am inflating the right and again positioning the right pulmonary artery stent, I parallelly the inflate the superior vena cava stent and get both of them fully expanded. Now you see that the right this is, the, this is the right pulmonary artery stent being deployed, and this is both the stents being pressed against each other so that that right pulmonary artery's anteroposterior compression was relieved. So this was an unobstructed right pulmonary, uh, like, uh, like superior vena cava blood flow. And uh, this is finally our pressures at this point came to an RV systolic pressure of 35 millimeters of mercury. This pulmonary hematoma slowly disappeared and became better thanks to the natural healing process of human bodies, 
the right upper pulmonary vein is normal, the child is fine, he's walking around. So the, 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 the problem was lack of identification of superior vena cava, which is a completely anterior structure on a lateral view because of clouding of the mind that above the superior vena cava, I'm going to get a higher pressure. And when I inject into the superior vena cava, I'm going to get an azygos. And now I'm getting an azygos. I'm getting a higher pressure. So I am in the superior vena cava and I just push the sheath inside. The principles of not identifying that the superior vena cava can never be posterior to the right pulmonary artery was forgotten. So, so uh, like I, I, the reason, in fact, I was planning some other nightmare, but I thought this is, this is a clear demonstration of complete lack of understanding of the anatomy and going totally like, you know, uh, like without any concepts in anatomy and performing an intervention. I sincerely apologize. The reason for showing this is like to make uh, people aware that, uh, you know, continuously thinking about the anatomy is far more important. Thanks, Shiva. The only one thing why your pulmonary vein pressure was 25? I'm wedging. I'm wedging against the pulmonary artery. I'm getting the distal pulmonary artery pressure. I told you finally the RPA, RPA pressure was 45 and with a mean of 25. I'm getting the wedge, wedge pressure. I'm not able to recognize that. Yeah, uh, systemic I thought it is pulmonary vein pressure. communications are very well known in all such situations. Chronic SVC obstruction is the most common cause of this kind of communication. Uh, I think it's a very, very good exactly. demonstration. And over and above that, it's so uh, gracious to uh, have Dr. Shiva Kumar uh, enlighten us with what step by step what actually should have been done and what uh, he could not do or uh, for that matter anybody could have done that so we should all understand even after doing so many cases if dr shiva can make that mistake we all can make that mistake so we should take that uh, uh, lesson and i think uh, uh, thank you so much uh, dr shiva for sharing this with us